Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When we call out to Allah, when we supplicate, when we beg from Allah, when we ask Him, when we pray to Him, people wait for the response. They ask Him for something and they want it. And it's difficult because we don't know when we're going to get what we've asked. And we keep asking Allah. He wants you to have hope in His mercy and we, He wants you to have hope in His response. He tells you, when you call out to me, I hear it, I respond. Allah is hearing and Allah responds in a way He knows is best for you because He's the most merciful. So because Allah is merciful, if you're asking for something harmful, He would give you something else that He knows is not harmful. But because you don't know the future, He kept something away from you knowing that that is going to be destructive for you in whatever way the destruction would be. So therefore, out of my love, I know what you asked me. Trust me, I've given you something better. Imagine a little baby ask you for a gun and in turn you give them a sweet or you give them something much more meaningful, a toy. Because you know if this child gets a gun, they would pull the trigger one day and cause death or cause harm. So similarly, when we ask Allah for things, you need to be convinced that Allah has heard it and He responds to it. Allah says, Ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'ani. I respond the call of the caller when He calls me. So this is what Allah has promised us and He told us. Now when you call out to Allah, you've begged Him for something. He may give you exactly what you want, when you want and how you want. That is amazing because that means what He knew was good for you and what you asked was exactly the same thing. Here you are. Subhanallah, when you get what you've asked for, become closer to Allah. Many people ask for something, when they get it, they distance from Allah. And Allah says that in the Qur'an, that when man is aff uh, afflicted with something, he calls out to us. When we alleviate whatever he was afflicted with, he carries on on earth as though he never ever called out to us for anything. He like forgets us. So that's a problem. So Allah Almighty, when he gives you what you want, how you want, when you want, then remember something. It should be a means of making you closer to Allah. However, in a lot of cases, that may not be. He may give you what you want, but slightly delayed. Delayed by how much? He alone knows. Maybe a few weeks, months, years, or perhaps in the hereafter. If it is in the hereafter, it's going to be far better than what you asked for. Thirdly, what you need to know is at times, Allah Almighty hears what you've asked for. And he wants to give you something in the hereafter only, which is better than what you've asked for, for a reason he knows, because this is better for you. It's better for you. If you've asked, for example, for a certain amount of money, it can happen. And Allah says, in your case, it's better for me to give you paradise for the patience you're going to bear as a result of us not giving you whatever you wanted and therefore your ultimate victory and success which is eternal would actually come as a result of that patience go for it so what it is here is dealing with this difficulty is through conviction that Allah does only what is best for us this is the case with marriages with businesses with uh, health with so much more. Sometimes people are praying because they don't have good health. And although in one of the episodes we did speak about health, the point here is the supplication. We pray with hope that we're going to be cured, even if it's going downwards and we see the deterioration. The hope and the prayer, those two together, can earn you eternal paradise in the face, 
meaning you made that, that prayer and you had the hope in the face of complete loss of it on the side of medicine. So that faith and conviction, yaqeen, with which you called out to Allah, in the dying moments, Allah loved it so much. That is my worshipper. He believes in me. He actually calls out to me with such conviction for him is paradise because you've arrived at a level of conviction that even if you died having had hope, at least you died hopeful and not hopeless. At least you died with a smile. You met Allah Almighty and he was so pleased with how you worshipped him. Because remember, your prayer, your supplication is an act of worship. Your hope is an act of worship. Hope and patience are acts of worship that are only uh, given the opportunity to selected people to engage in. Only selected people. So if Allah has chosen you to engage in some of these acts of worship, they're actually a privilege, an honor. Believers at times need to be reminded to look at it this way. And that's why our brothers and sisters in Palestine going through the challenges, it's like Allah has made them strong. Allah has made, given them that conviction. Allah has put them on another level of endurance. May Allah bless them, protect them, grant them goodness and ease. And may Allah Almighty grant them victory. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, when we ask Allah something, don't for a moment think he didn't hear, he heard it. Similarly, when you seek the forgiveness of Allah, you say, oh Allah, forgive me. He heard it, and if you were genuine, he forgave you. Done. So, shaitan creeps in again and makes you doubt, did, no, Allah didn't hear me. No, Allah did not forgive me. Don't allow that to happen. Allah heard you and forgave you. We will repeat it again, not because we are doubting that Allah forgave us or not, but rather because we want to achieve a higher status in the eyes of Allah. We repeat it, we are embarrassed, we committed a sin. We feel that we owe it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Again, Oh Allah, I did this, forgive me. Oh Allah, I feel so bad, forgive me. Allah's forgiven you first time, second, third, fourth, your eleva your, the elevation of status is happening. So it's good to repeat the istighfar, the seeking of forgiveness, but not out of doubt of the mercy of Allah, rather out of love of Allah. And out of the embarrassment of a human being, said, you know what, I'm so embarrassed, uh, I, I actually sinned against Allah. May Allah forgive me. So Allah hears you, don't ever doubt that. Allah gives you. When it comes to repentance, it's always given as long as you were genuine. Genuine meaning you were truly remorseful, you regretted it, and inshallah you have promised not to repeat that. Uh, I, I don't want to do that again, oh Allah, uh, forgive me. I acknowledge what I did. So Allah Almighty elevates your status. When you ask Allah for something, at times He gives you something way beyond your imagination as a result of a dua. So an example of it is when Allah Almighty has not given you the thing you've asked for, but so many other things happened in your life, it was a direct result of the fact that you supplicated and called out to Allah and called out so your children became good and you had a blessed situation, you had a lovely home, you had successes in your business, you had so much of uh, goodness in the dunya and perhaps you'll earn so many different things because you worshipped Allah in a certain way. So Allah Almighty is the greatest. Always call out to Him, always have hope, always know that He has heard your prayer and understand the different ways He responds. You will never be at a loss. When you have hope in Allah and you've called out to Him, He will always give you not just one thing, but many things in return for that great act of worship. And like I said, Allah chooses you to worship Him through sabr and through having hope in Allah. And that's why we should always be having hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know with conviction that Allah has heard us and forgiven us. May Allah grant us the best of this world and the next. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama ala nabina Muhammad.